Hey, what's up, Tiger Nation? In this video, we're going to take a look at four reasons why LSU defeated Florida 42-28. to So I'm going to be honest, I'm going to go ahead and spoil the rest of this video right off the bat. And it's going to be a lot of praise for the offense. And it's going to be a lot of cliche talk. Because I think what they did last night, in the simplest terms, is just... I mean, they did what you expect them to do. So my game MVP, I have to give it to the entire offensive line. Sadiq Charles, Adrian McGee, Ed Ingram, Lloyd Cushenberry, Damian Lewis, Austin Tehillis. They all played great. According to Florida's fans, they brought in the best defense in the country, along with the best defensive line in the country, and our offensive line stonewalled them. Now I'm going to focus on the pass protection here, because, another spoiler, we're going to talk about the run game a little later, but Florida came into this game with 24 sacks. They didn't get to Joe Burrow. They did not bring him down a single time. They got a little bit of pressure on him, especially, I would say, in the first half. But he was able to evade the rush, get outside the pocket, and pick up yards with his feet. So I have to tell you, I was shocked at how well the offensive line played. I said in my four reasons why LSU will dominate Florida video that if Charles and Deculus can hold their own against the Florida defensive ends, that LSU would win this game big. And LSU won this game by, what, 14 points? It may not be 40 points. With two scores, I consider not getting your ass beat. And before we move on, I do want to make one quick point about Ed Ingram and Adrian McGee. Why is Adrian McGee still playing? You know, I'm, I'm kind of feeling the Jonathan Giles situation from last year. Ed Ingram's obviously better. The man hasn't played football in two years, and two weeks in, he's obviously better. I don't know if it's a... A conditioning issue where Ed Ingram just can't play 70 80 plays yet if it is that it's understandable but hopefully I would say by Auburn he's ready to go but that's just a very minor nitpick on my part the second thing I want to touch on is LSU's run game I felt like Florida bottled him up a little bit better in the second half but for large part every time LSU handed off the ball they were getting chunk plays Clyde ran 13 times for 134 yards and two scores. TD Price, three carries, 40 yards, along a 33. I think that touchdown, if I remember correctly, put LSU up 35 to 28. And then poor John Emery, I think he initially came in at the start of the second quarter, had one carry for two yards. And I think on the next play, he missed the blitz, almost got Joe Burrow rocked, and we didn't see him after that. And it's just, if you can't protect nine, you can't play. You know, it's one of those deals, but I'm not worried about it. Uh, he'll get his opportunity next week. He's going to make a good uh, impression. You know, he's going to be fine. LSU running backs carried the ball 17 times, 176 yards, three scores, and probably one of the biggest attaboys you can give, again, to the offensive line. Florida had one tackle for a loss. I'm telling you, we... We dominated them all game. And now for your weekly Joe Burrow segment, 21-24, 293 yards, three scores. He tacked on an additional six carries, 43 yards. I mean, the man had as many touchdowns as he did in completions. I don't know what else to say, you know? It's, I mean, I guess this was probably the first game this year where you can look at LSU dominating on offense and just say that was NFL wide receivers Jefferson and Chase calling against NFL DBs for Florida and we got the best of them and we got the best of them often so I guess really the only thing I can add uh, about the passing game other than that is if you didn't believe in it before last night Hope you believe in it now. And the last thing I want to talk about is the defense. Uh, it was a tale of two halves. I know everybody was ready to fire Randa at halftime, but 
I think he came out saying, hey, let's see if we can get pressure on Florida with our front four. And then we drop everybody else back in coverage. And simply put, it didn't work. Uh, you can argue that Aranda should have known that you couldn't get pressure with just your front four. I mean, hell, I'm just some guy in my man cave, you know, and I knew they wouldn't be able to get pressure. It's just LSU needs to get better pass rushers in their front four. I mean, God bless Chase on, you know, he he's a physical menace, but you get your hands on him and that's it. I think the biggest thing you can really hope for is just that Glenn Logan gets back because he seems like the one guy that can probably get consistent pass rush uh, up the middle. Yeah, uh, LSU went in at halftime. They adjusted. You wouldn't know it from the first drive where they picked on Derek Stingley, which was interesting. Uh, I kind of feel like if you run a go route against Stingley, you're asking for trouble. But if you run a slant or something quick like that, then you can get the better of him. But he's an 18-year-old freshman. You know, we have him for three more years after this. The guy's gonna be the best in the country. I'm not worried about him. Uh, but yeah, LSU, they adjusted. They started bringing pressure. They started getting to Trask. He made some mistakes in the second half that he didn't make in the first half. But if I'm giving uh, a couple standout performances on defense, I feel like the first guy you have to talk about is Tyler Shelvin. He played his best game as a Tiger. He, I mean, he, he ate that Florida center's lunch all game. He couldn't block him. He was in the backfield. And he missed, I mean, Shelvin got in the backfield a lot, but he missed a couple plays in the backfield. But he, he was disruptive, and it allowed time for his teammates to, to make the tackle. I feel like Grant Delpit had his best game of the season. Shades of last season, Grant Delpit. He was all over the field. He was attacking the football. He was everywhere, and it was good to see. And then if I had to give one more standout, uh, I think LSU has some with Marcel Brooks. I think he's been dealing with a bit of a uh, suspension because he kind of comes and goes, but he, he shows up in these big games, kind of like Sadiq Charles and Michael Divinity. And, you know, so he has to be dealing with some kind of suspension, but I think they really have something with him off the edge. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. But yeah, I don't have too much to add other than that, you know, uh, Florida comes in top 10 team in the country you beat them by 14 there's not much to complain about thanks for watching guys please consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos just like this drop your thoughts in the comments uh if you made a score prediction in my in my previous video go ahead and drop that uh give yourself a little pat on the back if you're close yeah i think that's about it for me guys so i'll see y'all next time peace